All right, the decline in oil is moderating a little bit. Still, we are sitting around one month lows and certainly pulling back from that $95 per barrel that WTI briefly kissed. From uh, the peak, we're down already about 10%. This, this happened in a pretty swift order. Uh, call it a week, week or two that we have pulled back more than 10%. Let's get some perspective here. We're joined by Patrick O'Rourke, Managing Director at ATB Capital Markets. Patrick, thanks so much for being with us. I mean, once we hit 90, we thought it was just a pit stop to 100. What happened? Well, I don't know if we necessarily shared that uh, view over here, but um, you know, I think that what's happening in the oil markets this week and over the last several days is, is really driven about fears on the demand side. Um, OPEC, uh, you know, sort of reinforced their discipline through the end of the year yesterday. It's really about the consumer, and and what we saw yesterday in particular was on the motor gasoline side. Mm -hmm. uh, demand has been very anemic there, and and that's driving you know fears about the consumer, and you know perhaps with things that are going on, softness in the job market, U.S. government shutdown, the expiry of the uh, student loan program, and those pay payments coming back in, just taking a few dollars out of the consumer's pocket here. The sell-off was significant in that it brought oil prices below the 50-day moving average. Where does oil go next from here? So they've broken through the 50-day moving average. There's still a little bit of space down to the 200-day moving average, which is sitting around 77.50. Um, you know, we're looking at the medium and, and longer term here. We had initially been anticipating 2024 average prices around $70. I think we've had some conversations recently around the office that that, you know, with the inflationary impacts could be around $75 um, would be a price. And then you have to think about it with the Canadian dollar uh, and with differentials, our producers are, are still receiving a fairly robust price right now. And, and everybody has said that, you know, life is good above, call it $70, $75 for a lot of these producers. While it might be, is it possible that, you know, if oil is going to get back down to these levels, the stocks are going to pull back pretty significantly? Or do you think they can hold up? So there is a lot of operational leverage uh, in the cash flow profiles of these Canadian businesses between $70 and $90. And that's because a lot of our uh, big wedges of production have pretty high fixed costs, um, oil sands, mining operations. So uh, as the commodity comes back here, the stocks look expensive a lot quicker. Mm. Um, you know, in our view, we, you know, things look uh, compelling, um, but not as compellingly cheap as, as they have been. It's interesting that you say expensive because all I ever hear about is how cheap and dirt cheap uh, this sector is. What does expensive look like in this sector? So when we think about our businesses, when we're looking at, you know, primarily we look at long-term intrinsic values, but let's bring it back to sort of the short term so we can, you know, kind of have a base case of where things are trading. Um, if you have free cash flow yields in 2024 on these business models at, you know, 16%, and you think about that relative to other sectors in, in the Canadian index, that probably looks pretty attractive. What you have to bake in there is the fact that you have moves like what we're seeing over the last couple of weeks, a, a higher level of volatility in these valuations. So, uh, you know, at pre cash flow yields in excess of 15%, these stocks still probably look pretty attractive relative to other sectors in our view. Uh, you, you've got buys on most of the stocks uh, that you cover, both in natural gas as well as oil. Suncor, though, you are sort of neutral, neutral on a sector perform. Why is that? And, and do you have any thoughts on whether um, the, the deal for Fort Hills is a needle mover? So the deal for Fort Hills that they announced last night, um, in our view, it comes in line with, you know, sort of the metrics that they did the previous deal for tech, maybe a little bit better than the initial deal that they had struck for all of Total Canada. If you take out uh, sort of the trailer payment that would have been involved in that, uh, it's a long term strategic thing uh, for the business. They're trying to keep those upgraders at baseline uh, full in the long term uh, when you do eventually hit the end of the mine life in those assets. Uh, you know, the business has some really strong attributes to it. Uh, the downstream we really like. We just think that relative to some of the other producers, 
uh, maybe there's a little bit more upside right now, especially in a higher oil price environment. Is there, uh, though, a better opportunity with management? Rich Kruger, very motivated. You know, is there a bit more low-hanging fruit uh, in terms of turning things around at Suncor relative to some of these other companies? Yeah, we like Rich, and we like the message that he's coming out to the market with. Um, you know, the valuation is, is starting to look intriguing as well. Uh, the challenge for us is that some of the issues in the upstream business are, are going to take uh, a little bit of time to turn around. They're not short cycle fixes that this business has, uh, that Suncor has in its upstream business. So we'll watch as it plays out over the next couple of years as they improve their mining operations. Um, but, I, you know, I think it's going to take a prolonged period of time till this business really returns to uh, what it's been over sort of the last decade as the champion of Canadian oil production. All right. So leave us with your top idea in the space right now. Our top idea in the space today in the, in the large cap would, would be Synovus. Um, you know, we think that operationally it's improving. We've been watching the upstream assets, public filing show really good production at uh, Foster Creek, Christina Lake and Sunrise. We think that the downstream, U.S. downstream in particular, is, is going to start to look really good into 2024. And all those things are coming together and they're about to hit uh, on our numbers. They're coming very close to that $4 billion dollar uh, net debt target that they have where they step up that return of capital. So uh, Synovus would be the pick for us right now.